Okay, welcome to the Byte Federal Podcast. So my name is Michelle Weekly. I'm the Director of Product Development at Byte Federal. And today we have Andre, who is our Director of Engineering. And you guys don't even know this, but I am so excited for this conversation. I am too. <laughs> so I'm waiting my whole life for this. <laughs> it's true. It's true. He's been like, uh, he didn't even know that he was going to become, unfortunately, a subject matter expert on communism. Yes. But he totally is, and I am here for it. So I run my mouth online a lot about communism. It's not something I really like ever knew anything about until really I had spent time in China, and then I came back to the United States. And it was really mind-blowing, like, the experience of being gone and coming back. And I always attribute it, I attribute it largely to, like, not necessarily the fact that I was gone at all, but the period of time that I was gone. So I was gone in, like, a lot of 2015, 2016, 2017, when the Trump propaganda, like, really dialed up. So I think it was an interesting time to be gone because the propaganda in the media like reached a fever pitch well it's, it's continued right but it got dialed up and i was just out of it so there's this like frogs in a boiling pot thing right where people didn't necessarily notice but i was gone i had no exposure to like western media i came back i was like holy shit what's happening here um and i was really comparing that to my recent experiences in china obviously china is a communist state and like is it well, it, it, I think it turned capitalist lately. Well, no, it's totalitarian, but okay. they love their money now. So you don't think it's a true communist I'll, state? They used to, but I, okay. I, I think they moved on. They're keeping their their totalitarian grip. Right. So you don't think China's like really a communist state at this point? No, I, I think they're totalitarian, but they definitely love their money now. Okay. You cannot. It, it happened in Venezuela. These people ran out of money, right? Okay. So, so wait. Let, so. First of all, when you when you're like distinguishing between communism and totalitarianism, like what even for normal people is that really distinguishing I think between? You can still, like for example, in 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 Russia, yeah, yeah, Vladimir Putin who's been there for what over twenty years now, yeah, and the guy's probably the guy's probably gonna die in power, so probably so a dictatorship. He's pretty much a dictator. Yeah. Nobody he, nobody dares say anything because you get killed, of right. course. But it's capitalist. You can't maintain right. nowadays. They, I think they all realize that you can't maintain. Maybe North Korea. It's a different, a little bit different it's there. It's like its but own. Yeah. That's its own thing. Yeah. Because now everybody's just poor, but you have this military grip that if yeah. you say something, they send you to a camp. But China too. You got to But you, you, they need their money. They, right. They, so it's like a blended structure. Yes. And, and Venezuela. I think went to that point, or it's going to that point too, where sure these guys are doing everything to stay in power, yeah. But they cannot open up the markets. They pretty much reversed most of the economical policies that Chavez implemented in Venezuela. In Venezuela, okay. So well, so I just want to complete a timeline here. So, you know regardless of whether it's like a true communist society or they've moved more to like totalitarianism, whatever it is that's happening in China, I think there's this massive disconnect for a lot of Americans where they look at some of these communist, formerly communist totalitarian countries like China, Russia, Venezuela, and they don't understand that it could happen here. And by some measures, I think it is happening here. Um, and that's what I really like want to talk to you about. So I've learned so much since being at Byte Federal from you. And it's really, it's alarming, but it does, you know, it, it always helps to like have more information, right? And so you're full of information. Um, I had sort of suspected and started studying these things under the like suspicion that there was a lot happening here in the U.S. that was similar to what was happening in China. And people had just called me crazy. Like people, you know, really, really didn't want to talk about it um, until 2020. And when COVID happened, people kind of came back and said like, holy shit, I can't believe that they're locking us down. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's more to this. Um, and I think that that has opened up the conversation, but there are still massive parts of the population that are completely blind to it. Even people that are maybe more awake, you know, 
and open to the ideas. They don't think that they understand really how close we are. Um, so you've made many comparisons. You know, things happen all the time, and we get these great rants in at the office. Yeah. Um, where you're like, oh my God, I saw this happen in it's Venezuela. This history. is, ex yeah, it's like rewatching history. So I wanna touch on as much of that as we can. Um, for maybe for people who are listening who don't know much about Venezuela, except it's communist and their money is kind of worthless, uh, can we do like a quick 101 on what Venezuela used to be like? So Venezuela was not always a communist state. No. Okay, so let's no. go back to I don't think that. Ever, even even we had a, a dictatorship back in the fifties, but it yeah. wasn't really that dictatorship built actually built more than anybody else. More like flourishing, like you had a like more infrastructure. Right, the infrastructure of the country was yeah. because of that dictatorship in the fifties. Okay, and so for a period of time, like Venezuela was thriving. They had the best economy in the oil. It, right, the discovery of oil. Yeah, made it so wealthy. Yeah, it's a really rich country. There's no reason they shouldn't it's the thrive. the richest country in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, what happened? Um, there's also uh, corruption, right? Yeah, of course. So, I think that's what happened. Corruption happened. So, there's a lot of corruption. Where we were this country who had everything. Uh, yeah. I remember, yeah, I was born in 84. Mm -hmm. But I remember growing up in the 90s. I mean, Venezuela was beautiful yeah uh, and thriving and but there was also corruption mm -hmm. and there was also um poverty i mean it's latin sure. america there's always poverty was there a middle class in like the 90s yes there I was think that was the majority though okay like, so the majority was middle class right so similar to maybe the united states yes. in the 90s yes yes yeah okay and then what um Politically, because we're gonna we're gonna follow a few yeah. threads. I want to talk about money specifically, yes. uh, since we're working in Bitcoin. But first, I want to talk about the politics and the political setup, and then we're gonna go back and look at the money, and then of course we'll talk about the comparisons we're seeing here in the states. But politically, what happened? So in 1992, yeah, the president that was there. I mean, the and that was who? He was uh, Carlos Andres Perez. Okay. Uh, he was a little corrupt, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, he stole like, but it's funny that now that they they compare of how much the guy stole to compare to what Hugo Chavez or or Maduro have right. stolen from the come from the country, and it's just the the amounts are just insane. Right. So sure, he stole some. So then you have this uh, young lieutenant called Hugo Chavez that he goes and does a coup mm -hmm. against uh, him in ninety two. And when you say a coup, can you tell us like that was a military coup? A but military it was coup. Just a group. Was there it was like just a group? It wasn't like oh the whole military. Oh, we're gonna overthrow. A was there the the illusion of an election? No, no, no that that, it that was, was straight that up was coup. That was just a spring. We just woke up, but yeah, I think it was like five in the morning. I I, I wasn't. I didn't live in um, in the capital. Mm -hmm. This happened in the capital. Okay, I lived uh, near the border with Colombia mm -hmm. in another city. So, but we, everybody woke up to the news. Was he like, was he involved in politics before? No. Chavez? He no, wasn't. So he, he just wasn't. shows up and he takes over the yeah. country? Yeah. He okay. just shows up. He wanted to topple the president because right. he was corrupt or whatever. So they, they claim that the president's super corrupt and so we have to take him down because of yeah. this? Yes. Okay. And did people go along with it? Were there protests? Were people upset? Was there any, like... So there was some fighting. Uh, the, the coup failed. Uh, throughout the day, it was, you know, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, so there was like an where, attempted coup where first. people can go out. Um, Protests? No. Lockdowns? The, uh, curfew. Curfew? Okay, so they put a curfew there were, in There place. were curfews, like you couldn't go out or anything because mm -hmm. they were trying to, you know, the military was trying to lock down, you know, get rid of the coup. Okay. Like, so um, they eventually they fell. They, uh, Hugo Chavez came into TV and... Um, and he called the others to put down their arms and no more spilling of blood and all that stuff. Okay. And uh, that's when the coup ended and then he ended up in jail. Okay. So it's kind of like resemble like the Hitler story. Mm -hmm. Pretty much where he did a coup and then he ended up in jail. Yeah. So uh, then uh, in 96, a couple of years later, three years later, I can't remember, um, the president at the time, Car uh, Rafael Caldera, I think he was elected in 94. 
um, he decided to release Hugo Chavez from jail. Okay. So they only gave him, he only served like a little bit of time. Were they friends or did he just say like, you know, we don't want to have political prisoners? Was there like more to it or just, all right, they let him out? Mm, <laughs> no, probably have to research. Okay, no that. problem. But so, I know that yeah. Caldera was, um, he was being to politics since like forever, since okay. like the 60s and 70s. Right. And he served two terms, but not conse- uh, consecutive Consecutively, terms. okay. But, uh, so he lets Chavez out. Yeah, everybody, a lot of people out of Venezuela blame him as... For letting Chavez out? letting Chavez out of okay. why this disease came into power. Okay, so this disease. Yes, mm-hmm. this uh, curse. It was right. cursed. Of communism. So the guy, um, he's let out, and then yeah. elections come by in 1999, he mm-hmm. decides to run. Okay. So, and then he gathers popularity because, sure, he tried to do a coup to... Uh, topple the com- uh, the the corrupt government, right? And um, a lot of people believed in that. That, that they was believed a big in mistake. Chavez it was in a, the beginning. Yes, okay. it, it was a that was a mistake there too. Yeah, for the people to vote for him. My mother, I know my mother. She did not vote for him. She okay. she hated the guy. Okay. And but a lot of people liked him. A lot of people liked him. He okay. he got. Um, elected democratically okay and And you think at that point in time the elections were like a little more on the up and up i think the elections were true at that point okay i don't think they were uh, yeah they were uh, rigged or anything they were straight up elections the guy was very popular okay it's like hitler he was like super popular when he got elected yeah did he get elected when you ran for chancellor? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. So you have like charismatic people, and they yes, rise to he, power. Yes, the guy was super charismatic. Right. You can't deny that. Yeah. So that's what got him into power. But you don't know the true self of right. somebody till after later, where he decided to the the year the following year in two thousand do a constitutional reform. Okay. There was no. Uh, re-elections in Venezuela. So he, he said, we're not going to do elections anymore. There was no, sorry, there was no indefinite re-elections. Yes. What do you mean by that specifically? Uh, you can only serve two terms over there. So he got rid of the two-term limit? He got rid of the two-term limit, yes. Okay, so he's setting himself up to be he in power, himself, indefinitely, power, yes. kind of. And were people resistant to that? They vote, everybody voted. Okay. So everybody voted on that, and they uh-huh. voted yes to a constitutional to reform. To allow him. Yes, to allow okay. him. To, no, well, you vote for the constitutional reform, and yeah. then they do whatever they want. Right. So that's actually that's what happened in China with Xi as well. They had two term limits. Yeah. It's not like this is how the constitution is going right. to be after if you approve it. Yes. No. It's right. like oh no, we need to do a constitutional reform so that we can get this uh, um, fifth republic movement, which that's what right. they called it uh, in. You know, so we can do and, and make Venezuela flourish. Right. So they say we need this constitutional reform. All yeah. you gotta do is vote yes. So yeah, sure, people voted yes. Okay. And that means then they can do whatever they want. Right. So this happened in 2018 in China. She did a constitutional reform so that he could take an unprecedented third term. Um, yeah. Okay. So. So then the rest is pretty much history. The rest it's been is history. Twenty-four years. Well, there's a lot. Okay, so years and then. the rest is history up until now. There's like some drama happening there again, right? We had yes, a. There's always drama. Yeah. There's been always drama. There's right. been. Once the the guy, once the hooks of communism get you, it's pretty hard to get out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there was, there was another coup. Yeah. In 2002. Mm-hmm. Uh, that removed him for power for like, I think it was like a couple of days. Then okay. they, they got him into power back again right and there's been other constitutional reforms mm-hmm. to keep expanding his uh, agenda giving him more and more power more and yeah. more power okay the, no. so we can talk later about like sure. what the comparison here in the united states is and and all of that but i know we've had a lot of conversations about one of the primary facilitators of this corruption and sort of rise to power by bad actors is the manipulation of fiat currency. Mm-hmm. And so as Bitcoiners, you know, like I'd like to burn it all down and have a Bitcoin. And that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. But I, we talked one day, we talked in the office 
and I, we didn't have a podcast or anything. I just remember thinking like, holy shit, I wish we had live streamed that conversation. It was so incredibly like enlightening for me to hear you explain the the currency side of what happened. So we've got like the 101 on the political piece, but from a financial perspective, um, what's happening as this is all happening, right? So Venezuela is kind of, is flourishing. You're a really rich nation with all the oil and like by all measures, the country should be well off economically. Um, but that's obviously, you know, not what happens. So the currency hyperinflated, like as you see communism coming in and taking over, yeah. you get a hyperinflation of the fiat currency. Yeah. So, and you, you see this power grab at the end, which I think is particularly interesting uh, as it parallels to what's happening here in the United States with the dollar being printed and printed and printed and rich people getting richer and richer and this sort of disappearance of the middle class. Yes, the, that's a key point of the communism, I think, is to get rid of middle class. Yeah. Make everybody the same. Right. Oh, but but of course, so everybody at the bottom end of the spectrum. Yeah, everybody ends up You poor, have a shrinking 1%. And then 1%. you have the elite on the top. Yeah. They're the only ones that can enjoy capitalism. Right. So... Walk us through hyperinflation and, and how you experienced it. And then, um, you know, the they want to talk about, like, the politicians, like, taking bribes. But it's not always as, like, explicit as a bribe, like, here's some extra money, please do this. Sometimes it's um, a way to get around, like, currency limits. And so they set up all these corporations. And we've talked about that, right? So let's talk about that. Yeah, so they decided to put um, uh, rate controls on the dollar mm -hmm. so that as to keep the Bolivar uh, safe. So the Bolivar in like the 90s, this was your currency. I mean, yeah. it, it's the currency of Venezuela. It's always been, yeah, they haven't yeah. moved on. They're using uh, multiple currencies now, and I don't think the government cares what they're using right. now. But back but then, the Bolivar yeah, had value, Bolivar, yeah. and it was the currency that you guys used yes. when you were younger. Okay, so the first sort of thing that happens is the currency control. Currency control so that you cannot go to the bank and and ask for whatever, how many dollars you want. So they say, they limit how much they access how many, you have. How much access you have, yes. Right, okay. So, and it started big, um, like big chunk, like you can go and get, sh I mean, it's big for for down there. Right. But like $10,000 or $15,000. That was the limit. You can get like a year. So then you can do um, whatever, travel or yeah. buy stuff for your business or So it doesn't whatever. affect as many people in the beginning because they put a pretty no. higher limit on it. And so the most people limit, are yes. not affected so by as this. To, so as to that the, the devaluation of the currency doesn't go rampant because people are trying to escape to the dollar because the money starts, the, the government starts printing money. Right. So people are trying to escape to the dollar, but they only let you buy so many. So that way they can control the price. So much it's dollars a, so it's a fixed price. per year. So many dollars per year. Um, right. They do a fixed price. Um, the the money markets, the, the their values, it's it's dictated by the by the market, right? Right. Demand and offer. But by you setting a, a fixed price, then in setting limits, though how much you can buy, now that creates a parallel market, which is the black market, mm -hmm. which is always going to be higher. Right. Then um, the the market, the restricted market, because people still need. If you run out of dollars to buy, of so many ten thousand a year, right. now you still need to, and you need another ten thousand. Well, you gotta go to the black market. And right. Get them. So that creates a black market. Yeah, and it the the black market is. You know, they want you to think the black market is only being accessed by like criminals or people doing shady things. But as the currency is inflating and the money is, you know, your $10,000 or whatever it is per year, it buys you less and less. So the percent of people who may consider going to the black market grows and grows. And you're like really shrinking. Does that. They, they have to keep on. They have to keep on shrinking the limits, and right. then they have to keep on increasing the the prices of the of the fixed uh, rate. Okay. That they can, uh, the people can buy them from. Okay. 
And the other thing, so, and then this sort of sets up like the perfect structure by which to do corruption, right? So we've talked about like if you've got the middle class that's disappearing, you've got the, the lower class that's growing so that more and more people are lower class, not middle class. And then at the very top, you have an elite class that's always getting richer and richer. And they're utilizing these very... They're hooked to the same government. Same structures, right. They get their bodies in the government. Right. So the more people you have who are dependent on the government money, no. the easier it is for them to control the population because you have all these people who need the government to succeed. Yeah. So then what happened with this black market yeah. is that you have um, all these corrupt people on the top that will get access to these dollars right. by creating this uh, shell companies that will go and create shell companies and do um, and have access to this lower priced uh, dollar. There were even, I think there were, there were two tiers back then. There was a tier for food and, and so if your business um, was to, because everything was being imported. Mm-hmm. So if your business uh, was for food or ph- pharmaceuticals to get them from the, from the other countries. Yeah. Um, you will get another different rate, uh, which okay. was even lower. Okay. Um, then the, there was that lower rate, yeah. then there was a regular rate, and then there was a black market. Okay. So these people were setting up uh, shell companies. These people being the politicians. The so politicians, the politicians' bodies. It's not like a black market for guns where you have criminals accessing the black market. I mean, surely that happens. But when you say these people, you're talking about the politicians and the elite class yeah. utilizing the black market to enrich themselves. Yes. Okay. The, it's insane the amount of money that they stole. Right. The, the, the amounts are astronomical. Yeah. Um, any Venezuelan can attest to that. Um, so they they go, they went ahead and created this, uh, they created the, the shell companies, then they go and, and buy these dollars. Oh, yeah, we're going to buy uh, so many ibuprofen capsules or whatever, which it was all BS. Right. So they you have, like, a fake business. Yeah, it's a fake business. They right. just get their dollars, and then they turn around, they grab those dollars and sell them on the black market. You pay off the the dollars that you just borrow at a super cheap price, mm-hmm. and now you have this excess um, profit. And you can do whatever you, you want. Do with it. And you do you it over rich. and over and over, right? Until the country runs out of money, right? Because the country is the one that sustains those dollars. Um, so there's like a, very, looting, a looting. Yeah, it was very profitable for them. Yeah. All the way up to 2008. This is my favorite part. So they're getting rich and they're looting, right? So you have the Titanic. It's a sinking ship. And they're They're like grabbing the silverware and all that. Right. But this is not sustainable. It cannot last forever. So ultimately, what happens? So I don't know if you remember all the way up to 2008, the Mm -hmm. barrel oil was up to like $150. Yeah. That was until that point. Right. And and allowed the the Chavez government to do... uh, all kinds of stuff in the do country. Do the looting. Too. So they're getting yeah. away with it because the economy globally is doing well. Yeah. They can print money. They can get away with it. But then there's he this... He was one of the... He was part of the... He was one of the... That will go to the OPEC uh-huh. and, and and tell the Arabs to, you know, increase the 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 barrel the price of the barrel oil. The, right. the price of the barrel oil was like $3 or $5. So yeah. It was like super cheap. Right. And that allowed them to, you know, cut production and they increase. OPEC doesn't exist anymore. OPEC is, like, minuscule nowadays. Yeah. They don't produce anything. But because of him, and yeah. they they figure out, oh, we can produce less and make all this money. Right. He raised the, 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 the price of the oil, the barrel of oil, up to $150. So they're looting their own country and they're looting the global markets to the mm-hmm. extent that they can, which was significant. But then in 08, we have this crash. massive crash, yep. the global recession. Yep. Everything so crashed. what happens? Uh, well, after that, then you start, they don't have the dollars yeah. to... Um, to keep taking. To keep people. So then you, they start limiting. So you get more inflation. They start raising the rates mm-hmm. against the dollars. That means the value in the Bolivar. They will do rates, I don't know, 
I think it was like every six months or whatever, yeah. change the rate to try and keep up with the parallel market. And when you say rate, you mean bolivar to dollar? Bolivar to dollar. Right. Yeah. Okay. It will cost, so I think it was like if it's six dollars, then mm -hmm. it'll go to sixteen dollars. I mean, it's sixteen bolivars per dollar, and then it will go to thirty-six bolivars per dollar, and it'll, they will keep increasing and limiting the amount that people have access to. So it right. went from ten thousand dollars a year to five thousand dollars a year. And I remember, I think in 2014, you can only get like $200 a year to, to with your credit cards to go and buy something like from another country. Right. And that ended all the whole thing ended because, yeah, they, ran out, they ran out of dollars. Right. So the whole thing. Collapses. They killed the, industry, the, the oil industry, too. So they right. they nationalized the oil industry. They nationalized the the metallurgic industry to nationalize everything right but then you put um ignorant people right to work at this uh at this uh, companies that were used to be private right all in all you gotta do is put on a red shirt and then you can yeah. work uh for uh for this company right and then you kick out the engineers then the, the smart people the, exactly the right. thing the whole thing collapses right and they're now not and they stop producing and that's yeah. why venezuela doesn't produce any oil like barely it's crazy and they have to import right so it's really wild so there's a lot of comparisons i think to what's happening in the united states and i think also it's really interesting um you know we talk about like the hyperinflation for example um well you tell me, so I run my mouth all the time talking about the comparisons, but you tell me, tell us, like, what comparisons do you see? And which of them, if any, like, are there things that alarm you? Um, you know, I, I'm one. alarmed by, like, Kamala Harris talking about potentially putting price controls in place. Yes, I was going to say um, just then. Uh, that was a big uh, mistake. That they, happened, yeah. It happened in, in Venezuela. They moved away from that because it was right. unsustainable too. Right. All it does is creates black markets. Mm -hmm. It creates a scarcity. Yeah. Because the producers don't want to produce this ball of water at 50 cents because it doesn't cost them 50 cents. It costs them 70 cents to produce. Right. Um, and so they can't make any money. And then they... What they do is the because now they're producing less, they grab this bottle of water, the people <laughs> grab this bottle of water, and then they went around and sold it for a dollar. Right. So then that creates scarcity and then creates this black market where the only th way that you can buy food over there was off the black markets and you have to pay pretty much international prices. Right. Uh, that happened a lot in where I used to live because uh, we were next to the border. Mm-hmm. And people were doing that and right. sending the food and the medicine across because the prices that they set then they were ridiculous. Yeah. It's like they set this bottle of water to be sold at two cents. Yeah. And who's gonna like that, that, that that's for an example for medicine. Right. The prices were ridiculous and, right. and they were so low that they will grab that the two cent uh ibuprofen mm. uh box yeah and sell it for like 15 dollars the profit margins were huge so people were grabbing that the people were uh also yeah complimenting to the whole disaster by doing that right 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 it wasn't you, just the government sure but people gotta survive somehow. i was gonna say you you get to a point where you really like have to do what you have to do so they will send um, that across right sell it overpriced they'll make their money yeah and the other thing with that was with gas okay gas was since like forever that I remember, it's oh, it was always like a this fix. It was like a Bolivar ninety seven or something like that. It was like super low. Yeah, ninety seven cents. It was well. um, subsidized. Okay. The gas in Venezuela because there were we were so rich and yeah. we had so much oil, it was always subsidized. Okay. That was one of the measures yeah. that uh, Carlos Andres Perez uh -huh. uh, in ninety. One or ninety two, yeah, when, when Chavez did the coup, yeah, that triggered that. Also, now I remember that that coup. Okay, uh, they call it Caracaso mm -hmm. because um, they uh, they he decided to raise the price of gas by a little bit just to okay. keep up, you right, know, the, with the with what it's the price is supposed to be. Sure, 
Okay. Um, you can't just inflate a, 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 a currency and right. not adjust a, for adjust it. Adjust the sure. other stuff. So because of that, yeah. Um, that w- that's what that uh, Caracas was happening. That was a major revolt. Everybody in Caracas went out. I think that was before mm-hmm. the. What was this? Can't remember. I think it was before the coup. Okay. Um, and it's um, sort of part of the, the timeline. Yes, that that's what led to the coup. Also, yeah. the that discontent for for this president for a little bit of an so adjustment. So since forever, yeah, politicians are always or were always not anymore afraid of raising the gas prices. Okay. Because it could trigger something like that. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't until like I think it was twenty eighteen, twenty seventeen when they started doing prices up to or they will have like two um types of gas stations. One where it was international prices. Okay. For supposedly for foreigners when yeah. they come in with the cars. And that was after they opened up the borders, but Okay. Uh that's where they can come in and um and fill up their gas at a, uh, it was like a dollar per gallon. Yeah. And there were the, that was the other one for Venezuelans, which was super. So if the one was a dollar per gallon, this one was like five cents per gallon. Okay. But you're limited to right. how much you, how can, much you pump can pump have. a week. Okay. It was a pain in the butt. Yeah. There's people going, doing lines. Right. Uh, for two or three days. So if you're wealthy and you can afford the foreign gas, I'm sure they probably yes. like look the other way and let you buy it. Yeah. But they're also, you know, but that's not, not for everybody. That, no. Right. Do you have yeah. people were doing like lines in, in, or queues in, in, in their cars waiting right. for two or three days at the gas station for the truck to come in and pump the gas. Right. So they can then pump and continue to live on with their lives. So is this coming soon to a Western country yes. near you? Um, <laughs> One thing I think that we probably can all agree on is that the middle class in the United States is disappearing. Maybe disappearing, maybe not quite disappearing, but the middle class is shrinking. It's a slow process. This didn't happen fast. It's been 24 years. Yeah. It probably took, so those first initial eight years till the collapse in 2008. Mm -hmm. Then around 2012, it started getting bad. 2014 was hyperinflation in the in Venezuela in the millions of percent of right. the do- of the bolivar yeah so it's a slow process right they they just don't turn on the heat cuz then sure. everybody's going to revolt right they slowly uh drive into out of the medium class yeah so the middle class is kind of being driven out i see you know we've talked a lot about america being in that sort of looting stage where the wealthiest of the elite are getting richer. I think we saw this during COVID, where the 1% uh, increased their wealth yeah. a lot. And I don't have the numbers, but a lot. And um, and a lot of the middle class really structure struggled. A lot of people are suffering. And, and now it's, uh, it's almost common that a lot of people can't afford groceries. Yeah. Like, this is a harsh reality. Um, But I think it's a reality that really needs addressed because obviously it's not sustainable. But I think also from like a higher perspective, there are big red flags that people need to be aware of. This is not like just things being run poorly. A lot of what's happening in the U.S. is by design, I would I would venture to say. It feels like it. Yeah. And. We've seen it happen over and over many, many other places. Um, so there's, you know, there's the destruction of the middle class. There's mass printing of the fiat currency. Mm-hmm. So you have the dollar that's worth less and less, which helps to, again, continue to shrink the middle class. Gun control. Gun controls. Yep. So this is a big one. So Americans, do not give up your guns. Don't. Ever. So what happened with the guns in Venezuela? They got, they were they were illegalized. Like Illegal. So they were they were legal. You were yeah, allowed you could, to have guns, yeah, just like guns. America. Yeah. You had guns. People had guns. They weren't like big, like America. Oh, I gotta have my guns. Like gun culture. No, but you they, had there, there was no. I didn't grow with a gun culture. No. Yeah. But did your family have a gun? There was a, there was a, an armory right next to. On the, on the corner, I remember. Okay. As I was going by, and mm-hmm. there were there were many. 
So when did guns get banned? Did they come and forcefully take them? Did people turn them in? How did that, how did they get? They just legalized them. uh, No, they didn't. So they made it illegal. If you get caught uh, on the, the problem with there is that like, if you're, you're like traveling in your car or whatever, and then, so they militarize everything. So now uh, there's freaking, uh, what do you call those? uh, Checkpoints? Checkpoints. Mm -hmm. There's checkpoints everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you travel. So if I go. Maybe not on the highway, but let's say I go somewhere and then buy US-41, there's a checkpoint there. Yeah. And then um, this run what by were they military. Checking? It's bullshit because they're all corrupt. Right, right. So, so maybe... they will just stop you and because right. they're corrupt and they don't make any money, yeah. they want you to uh, give them some money. Give them to, money. Here's to 20 some, bucks, uh, yeah, $100. Yeah. S- yeah. To bribe them so okay. they can be happy and live on with their lives. Right. And that's what's also sustaining this whole thing. Yeah. So bribery st- stuff. They make guns illegal. They sort of start militarizing things. They put checkpoints in place. Yeah, you can you can if they you get caught with a gun, yeah, they'll throw you in jail. They take the, the only gun, ones that are allowed to have guns were the right. bad the bad guys. But it wasn't always that way. No. So did you wake up one night and guns were illegal? Did it happen over time where they say like this type of I gun think it was and then that type? In the constitutional reform. They reform the constitution. Yeah, the now constitution. guns are illegal. Yeah. Okay. And um, people just gave them away, and and or hid them, or right. They just you don't just you just didn't want to get caught with with, with a gun. Right. Um, so you come in the office all the time and say, "Don't give up your guns." Yeah. And I think it's really important, but you know, I think it's something that people take for granted, uh, and they really they believe that because we're protected by the the Constitution. Um, we're not going to lose our guns. And so we're not, you know, we're not going down that path. There's this, this mindset that that could never happen here. But if you don't protect the constitution, yeah. you don't have the protections. Yeah. You have to protect the constitution too, because the, anything that the government um, does over there, it's against the constitution. Like they don't follow the constitution at all. In Venezuela. In Venezuela yeah. Right. So the Venezuelan constitution is very well written. Yeah. It's clear. It's, it's great. It's not. It's not a totalitarian constitution when you read it. But it's not enforced. Well, it's not enforced. Right. It's the constitution for the stupid people, not for them. Right. They do whatever they want. So, is it alarming to you when you see things happen here that are ruled unconstitutional, but then they yeah. happen anyway? Yeah, I think that a lot of these laws that they build on top that pretty much contradict the constitution. The laws. So in Venezuela, they put laws in place that were not constitutional, but they just did it anyway. Yes. Right. No, exactly. Okay. And I. That's what's concerning to me about that is I see a lot of that happening here, mm. and you have some people that see it and they're sort of screaming their heads off. But most of the people are either saying no, it's not happening, or it's happening. It's a good thing. Or they're just like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I don't care. Can you please leave me alone about this? But it's really like, you know, there's no one coming to save you. Like you have to uphold the constitution. And this, this is like, it sounds possibly crazy, but like we are all responsible for upholding the constitution in our lives, in our local communities. um, And then by extension in our states, because the federal government is never going to like they're never going to give us power back. They're never going to say, well, we have these powers, but JK, we don't want them anymore. You know, like there's this continuing overreach and it's not going to stop. So I think COVID is, is obviously like a really good example. We saw during COVID. Um, yes, there was a lot of rights there that were broken. They were taken. Yep. But you saw states and even more so than states, like local communities fight back against the unconstitutional mandates. And it came down to, like, did your your children's school require vaccination? Did they require masks? Did your local community dictate this or that? Did they close these things? Did they, you know, so there's really a lot of power in, like, being actively involved in your local community and making sure that your local community is upholding constitutional laws. And say no. Does that make sense? Yeah, you have to say no. Right. Um it's just funny how the, this whole thing is like, oh, you got to take these vaccines, these vaccines. All of a sudden, one day, oh, the data changed. Right. And now you don't have to. 
right like out of nowhere I'm yeah like, what the heck well this this all sort these of people that got kicked out of the military because yeah. they didn't take the the shots right um i think this sort of brings up another thing that we talk about a lot which is the media and do we have uh, a media like a free and fair media is it covering things honestly is it like i think at this point most of our media is just state-sponsored propaganda yeah. i know this is a, a tool that is extremely important um for totalitarian regimes very important yeah. so can you talk a little bit about the media like when you were younger was the media like more honest and then how did that sort of parallel i assume now it's not really honest at all and did that what are the parallels um as communism is taking over what's going on with the media so before um chavez took power there was this one uh, state mm -hmm. television the only state television that there was. It was called Venezolana de Televisión and uh, VTV. It was state-sponsored? state-sponsored. And they were honest about that? It was the worst freaking channel <laughs> that you can turn in, into back in the 90s. Okay. It was so bad. In, in what way? There was no way? entertainment. Like, I guess be, maybe because it's government-sponsored and, uh, right. and whoever worked there was like so lame. But okay. It, there was no entertainment out of it. So it was Nobody just... Nobody was watching. Right. But it was there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, these people go into power, and yeah. that one got reformed. Okay, and he got capital injected, and of course, right. because they want to share. They prop that one they up. Wanna, they prop that one up yeah. so they can do their propaganda, and then yeah. they created like two or three more different. Um, Was there like an illusion of options? Like these people talk the this way. These no, people talk, the, but there's th yeah. there were the private ones, mm -hmm. um, and then there were the ones that they created, which was like two. Or th three more besides the one that that was there originally okay and we had like i don't know 10 in total maybe and there was um the private ones um they they will always sure try to say the truth okay. but when you start reporting um bad stuff about the government yeah um you will get this entity to come and find you Okay. Because you can't say You're not it. allowed. Exactly. Right. They okay. created those entities. Right. To so perhaps like the Ministry of Disinformation? The, the entity, uh, it was, um, I remember the name of, the name, I just don't remember yeah. what its letter meant, but it's, okay. uh, it's for, it's for, it's, uh, it's an entity that regulates the, um, telecommunications. Okay. And was and there? What you can't say or you cannot say. Do they pretend that it's for your own good, like, or was there really at that point no illusion of that? It was just like you can't talk. No, out everybody, about us. everybody started seeing that whenever they spoke, yeah, uh, wrong. This this television channels they will get fine. Wrong. Th so you can't have wrong think. And and, yeah. and, and so there were the private ones, mm -hmm. and there were the state ones, and then little by little the. The private ones got bought. Taken over. Or taken over. So by, you get uh, a centralization of media and yeah. that enables complete yeah. control eventually. It was up to like 2014 when the last one. Yeah. Which we, like everybody just realized in the end that right. the president, like he, he was in cahoots with, with, the the, with the government. Various, okay. And they ended up just turning like like another one. And, uh, and, and at that point now yeah. there's no more free... Uh, there's no like, honest. there's no free media anymore. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're at like a really interesting point in time. What bothered me so much, I talked about spending It's almost like the same over here when when that right now you say that right. only maybe only Fox is the one that Right. that's sort of free, but then there's also you can almost tell that they just cannot openly say anything. Right. They certainly so, can't. So you like, think everything's controlled but Fox at this point? But I think that just Fox but is But they're also along. controlled. Yeah. Right. So, okay, I want to talk more about this. This is, this was the thing that was the most alarming to me. And, like, I get a lot of heat for comparing the United States to China, especially as it relates to, like, media and state-sponsored propaganda. But the thing that was so jarring to me coming back to the United States was how dishonest everything was. So in China, there's no illusion that you have, like, a free and fair press Right. Nobody pretends like you just you turn the TV on. They're talking. But 
obviously it's propaganda. You know that. And here, I think um, a lot of our disagreements are based on the fact that we're living in different realities. Like, do you, it kind of comes down to like, do you trust what's on the TV or not? Do you know that everything on the TV is a lie or not? And really a lot of the divide comes down to this. And so I'm interested in like on your take. I think it starts that way. And then everybody ends up when they end up, when it comes to them, when they start getting fucked by the government. Yeah. That's when they realize Everything and was a lie. And that's too late. Right. And that's where we are now, where everybody, like, it's not in agreement with the government. And right. But it's too late. So I think it starts that way, and, and you have the people on the left and the people on the right. Yeah. Who, the ones on the left, like, they believe whatever they're saying, but... Um, the ones on the left are believing the TV. Yes. Yes, so that's what makes the lefty... Until they start hurting their pockets, which mm-hmm. that comes later. Yeah. That's when they're going to realize that the economy is not doing so well even though my tv told me so exactly and 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 it may be too late that to even overturn it right right because at that point now the guns are gone they have the strict control over you you can't say anything they'll throw throw you in jail yeah and you know (laughs) something that doesn't get a lot of like airtime is the fact that america has political prisoners yes you know The the whole thing that um that they were doing to Trump where yeah. they were persecuting him. The warfare. The warfare. Right. The, and it's two assassination attempts, but... Right. Um, that they they did that to um, to the girl that was running for presidency just now. In, in Venezuela, spirit, in Venezuela. At the recent election. Yes. So yeah. she got... Um, they did that. What is that? They... The persecution. The, the lawfare. The, the, she couldn't run. Mm-hmm. But over there, they have c- complete control of everything, so right. they, they didn't allow her to run. Right. Kind of what they did to JFK. They were successful with JFK, uh, ju- or, I'm sorry, RFK Jr. They, like, kept him off the ballot a lot of places. Like, I think if everything was mm-hmm. open and fair, that that would be the Democratic nominee. Like, he has a ton of support. Every, And they did that because everybody would, would, would vote for her. Yeah. So since she couldn't run, she decided to... Um, make this guy her man what do you mean like uh, she had a proxy no the Edmundo, the guy the, the guy that ran for president she threw her support behind him yes okay. so that everybody okay so pretty much if you're not voting for me yeah vote for him you're, right you're pretty much voting for me right um and that's why everybody voted for him okay and uh because she couldn't run and you're talking about so they just had an election was it this year was it last yes, yes, okay. this year? 2024. Yeah. What's her name? A couple of months ago. Her name was uh, Maria Corina Machado. Okay, just for people and listening. And the guy that ran mm-hmm. instead for her was Edmundo Gonzalez. Okay. And we're talking about the election in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. And you think it was a, like a fair election? No, everybody thinks everybody it was. Everybody knows. Everybody knows it's not, Probably definitely was not. not fair. Yeah, right. No. Because of they have all the receipts of the... Of each machine, right? Pretty much, and the 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 numbers don't add up, right? So you have this concept of the fact that you really can't vote your way out of tyranny. Now you can't vote your way out of tyranny. Yes. Yeah, and I think um, we're at a possibly a turning point. We're at a certainly an interesting point in the United States. Uh, I've had people ask me, like, you know, because I say that a lot, like, you can't vote your way out of tyranny. And so people are like, well, why do you support Trump? Like, oh, you think the voting matters? Ha ha. And I'm interested in your take on that. Like, I guess my take is kind of that I see how much D.C. hates Trump, how much uh, the media, the state sponsored propaganda, they hate him. There's all this lawfare against him, like all of that going against him. I feel let's vote for him. And if we can vote for Trump in like overwhelming numbers, they can only like rig things so much. Right. Which is why you're seeing all of this nonsense that says, oh, the polls are so close, even though like nobody really likes Kamala. Um, As long as they can like make people believe that it's close, they can fudge some things. But if there's so much support for one candidate, um, and I think we have the opportunity for that with Trump, I, I guess I'm hopeful that it can be too big to rig. Uh, whether you like Trump or not, like the other side is full of communists. Um, so what do you think about like 
should people vote in 2024? Like, are you going to vote? You don't, you can say, you cannot say whatever, but like, where are we with this concept of like, can we vote our way out of the situation we're in? Is it too far gone? You know, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no matter who you're voting for, you have to vote. Don't right. stay at home. I agree with <laughs> I, that. I don't even though I don't like the um, the mail in ballots, but at least right. you have that. You have the the possibility to vote early. Yeah, there's lots of options to vote. Is what and you're saying. And then you have the like, possibility to vote on that same day. Yeah. So there's no reason for you to not vote. Yeah, it's Just funny. Like, I, I was in D.C. for 12 years before I was abroad, and I hated politics. I, like, I don't know how I spent 12 years in D.C. I vowed never to be involved in politics. And I, I was successful at that. Uh, I didn't care. I didn't vote. I, did, I voted for the first time in 2020. I'd never voted before. Yeah. I felt that I, I, you know, always saw myself as a libertarian. I was like, just leave me alone. I don't care. I don't care what anyone is doing. Just leave me alone. And I, when I came back and saw kind of what was happening in the United States, I got more interested and active in all of this, in politics and stuff. And one of the most alarming things that I've learned is how few people normally vote. It's like less than 20%. So we end up. They think up, that the vote doesn't matter. But. Exactly, but if ninety percent of people voted, it we could be. like bring back common sense. It should be like a ninety percent turnout, not right. a sixty or whatever it is, like super right. low. Right, and then we might actually be able to, you know, I don't know, bring common sense back. Honestly, um, but yeah, I think apathy is something. Apathy and the fact that your vote doesn't matter is really a tool of tyranny where they want you disaffected so that you don't bother to vote so that they can just kind of do whatever they want. So what do we do? (laughs) Vote. Vote. Yes. Vote in November. Vote. Vote smart. It's not just a matter of like, it's not only what's happening at the top, right? Like during COVID, we saw what was happening in your local community really affected your life. And like things were sort of dictated uh, largely by the governments or um, the governor, the governors of like state by state. Right. So there's a lot of resistance from DeSantis here in Florida. And so you have not only is there a presidential election, but you have the down ballot. Like you got to vote for the people who are closer to you as well. Like the representatives, they're the ones that push a lot of stuff. Yeah. And one thing that I think maybe people don't realize or think about, like, I think when I was younger and I was thinking like, oh, I don't care, leave me alone. There's really, uh, there's disillusion in that, in the fact that like, you are not going to be left alone. There are rules that we have to live by. And you're a member of your community. You are bound by like, the laws of the country where you're a citizen, where you're residing. Um, And if you choose not to vote, then you're going to end up bound by the rules and laws of the craziest people who are voting for the craziest people. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) So you are going to be like, you might not want to be involved in politics, but politics is involved in you. Oh, yes. Period. So all these laws that they create, they they affect you. Right. Um, and it's going to, it comes back to you. It's going to be something that you won't like or that it's going to directly affect you. Like nobody is perfect. Nobody. Well, you're, you're saying something's going to affect you if you so, don't, whether you vote not, or not. By, not. by not voting. Right. Especially. Not casting your vote. Um, they're going to make some stupid law that it's going to affect you that I mean it is it's true so do you have any hope uh, do you have any hope for the 2024 election in the United States or have we reached a point where we can't vote our way out of the situation we're in um you said to me once We talked about this once, I think. And you said, like, 
it doesn't all happen in one election year. Like, there's a lot of debate about the 2020 election. And yes. there's, like, some numbers that don't add up. There's these bellwether states and things like that. Um, and so some people think that there were some things that were rigged and it was not maybe, like, super fair. And I think regardless of what you think about that, we can all agree on the fact that we want it to be fair in 2024. Yeah. And... The, my problem with with the like the, the I have a big problem with mailing ballots. Yeah, did they do that in Venezuela? No, they don't do that. No mailing ballots. But they have the stupid machines that. I mean, the the the, Are the they voting, voting. The machine? voting. You should be able to vote. Yeah. At a machine. So yeah. let's say it's a machine. You should. It should be manual. Right. So they can have counting, a record. Like so they can have a record, and nobody right. can. So, the, the record's there. Right. And the Didn't people th that are at the polling stations, are the are which is the citizens, yeah. should be the ones um, protecting those records. Protecting it, counting it. And there should be people from both sides right. at those points. Which can only happen if people are involved. Exactly. Isn't that what they did in Argentina? They had I think they did, they um, did um, the paper count. ballots, manual accounts. Yeah. And that's what impresses me, too. Uh, for example, I think it was in Colombia. Yeah. They do... Uh, they did a, a manual ballots, mm -hmm. and the results were in, like, at 6 p.m. Yeah. And you have... <laughs> You have these uh, computers uh, right. doing the counting, and then this lady comes out at two in the morning, right. saying that Nicolas Maduro won. So, oh wait, wait, you're talking about Venezuela? I thought you were talking about 2020. Oh, they did, but they <laughs> also the did in the United States. So that la last one, right? right. They, they they were a few states that they still didn't have the. Right. They know who won. Right. So it kind of there you go. It's but you you saw that Venezuela. happen in Venezuela. In, in so Colombia this is a pattern happened too. Like yeah, the, they. But that's what I'm saying. The the manual counts. They were right. there like by 6 p.m. They knew who won. Right. Which is well, how it used to be. It, it should be. The, it should probably be. Yeah. A machine, so you vote. Yeah. I'm a software engineer, so that's <laughs> the way I think. Um, you vote, and you should be able to go to a website. You, you're not gonna see your vote casted there. Oh, this guy voted for this guy, but you should be able to see those counts live. Right, and like if you're voting at nine in the morning, and you can see the little charts there, oh, this yeah. guys win, this other guys win. by three p.m. You'll see the numbers change or whatever, and you should be able to see this thing uh, live on some website. Mm -hmm. So it's fair. Right. You shouldn't have to. There shouldn't be. You shouldn't have been counting mailing ballots for two weeks. Three weeks later, yeah, yeah. With all the technology that we have, it's really absurd that things have gotten like more out of control, more chaotic. You know, it takes longer to sort out what has happened. Um, I think... It should be in person, too. you got to have proof of who's voting. Right. Just like when you go to a bank and you deposit or withdraw money, that person's there. He's seeing who you are and you get your ID or whatever. Yeah. This person is a citizen. So there you go. Yeah, you, you, vote. you need an ID for, Not like, everything that you paper, do. a paper, mail ballot that somebody, some lady went and put... Right. Uh, 2,000 ballots down a USPS uh, hatch. Right. I've heard um, somebody, I don't know, one of the like alternative medias that I listen to, whatever that even means these days, but somebody was talking recently about how you have the idea of like politics and so you have the idea of politics and then you have the idea of, forget exactly like what it's called, but... Um, the political structure. So it's not necessarily a matter of like, w it's not always just winning people over and making more sh people like you, but it's also a matter of like making sure that the voting processes are in place and are constitutional. And I think that one side does that a lot better than the other side, unfortunately. Um, it's like, the political structures. If there was any will to actually change all of this and do it like free and fair and open, mm. it'd be very easy to yeah. do. When I there's mean, there's a will, there's a there's a way. Like yeah. we Just could like, write uh, the code. I um, I um, I like to give the example of Bukele yeah. in El Salvador. When there's a will, there's a way. This guy got rid of 
all these gangs in like right a split second so what do you think about that actually so there's like mixed uh mixed reviews mixed thoughts on some people say that that was um oppressive or tyrannical or you know like oppressive that the people that are killing you <laughs> in the streets <laughs> that have no human rights or or right. they're in jail without whatever or they're being forced to work or right I, I, to those people, I would say, like, okay, go live in El Salvador and we'll let them all out. And then you let us know what you think should happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. The will, like, they can easily close the border over here. Here in, in the, the U.S. Second. Yes. Absolutely. And, but there's no will. <laughs> right. Because there's probably an agenda behind it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm an immigrant. Right. But... And I, but I do see the problem of, of this mass immigration. Yeah. You, well, you came here legally. Yes. And actually, we work with, like, most of, most of we have the guys we're working with are yeah, immigrants. Yes. I would say I'm actually in the minor minority at Bite Federal, um, you nope. know, having been born in the United States. And that, to me, is something really special. It's something... Uh, it's one of the reasons, quite frankly, that I was excited about us doing this podcast because we have all these really valuable conversations in the office with all of this insight from people who have already lived through the things that are happening now in the United States. And you might not want to listen to me running my mouth, comparing things to China, but you really better should be listening to people who have already fled communism and are trying to raise red flags about what's happening here in the United States. Yes. Like Andre. I don't want to flee to another country. <laughs> yeah, so Lenart says that a lot. Like, because I, I tried to leave. I went to Dubai. I was like, get me out of here. I'm going to go somewhere else. But ultimately, for anyone that has tried to do that, um, I actually, I have a friend that went to El Salvador and... Like, so there's a reason why everybody wants to come here. Yeah, it's Not it's flee. easier said than done. Like when you leave, like you have to do visas and things like that, and your family. It, it's complicated, oh, right? Yeah. Like, so there's really a lot to be said for staying and like trying to save America, and especially from anyone that has already fled their home country, and you've come here. We have to save the country for you guys. Like, if if we lose America, like, where are we all going to flee to? Yeah. I think it was one that when uh, fled Cuba, went to Venezuela, then things got bad, and she went to Argentina, and then sh things got bad, and now she's over here. You have a friend that I did think, that? Think, or we uh, have someone at There was somebody. Okay. There was somebody. Right. I heard a story. Okay. And we so, have... Uh, and we, we us as Venezuelans, we used to say, oh, that's not going to happen. We're not Cuba. Wait, when you were younger? When, when in this Venezuela. stuff was happening. Yeah. Or, the, or, 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 or people were saying, oh, Chavez is going to do this. Chavez is going to do that. Yeah. And we're like, no, it's not. We're not Cuba. We used to say that stuff like that. That's really no, interesting because that's what I hear a lot here in the United States. When they say that we're not Venezuela. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you say to those people? <laughs> uh, you're so wrong. It can happen. It absolutely can. Empires rise and fall. Mm -hmm. So, no, it can totally happen. America can fall, and uh, it may be in the process of falling. And we have to save it. Somebody, you know, I was actually in... I think in Prague and I was talking to somebody from El Salvador and it was just like I was trying to be you know nice somehow the election came up and I I said something about like well we might all be like fleeing to El Salvador and he you know he said no you have to save America mm -hmm. America is a beacon of freedom and it has always been a beacon of freedom. And if we can't say freedom in America, will it exist anywhere else? No. I don't know. What do you think about that? There's, this is the last place, I think. 
Yeah. Where else? Uh, I used to I, I used to think that Canada was free, but no. Oh, it's terrible out uh, there. <laughs> Toronto. I think Toronto is beautiful. Yeah. Been there. But the way that this the stuff that this guy did during Trudeau. COVID, yeah, yeah, he's a commie. Yeah, during COVID, it was really really bad there. Um, and then we saw a lot of the you know, the warnings. I think what is happening in Canada is. Like, a lot of the stuff that's actually happening there are the same things that we see, like, warning signs in the Kamala Harris campaign mm-hmm. and even maybe a little bit of, like, whoever, you know, whoever was propping up Biden. Um, I think there's there's a lot of that happening on that side and that if Trump doesn't win the election, we're really going to sort of follow in Canada's footsteps and, and ultimately it's possible, you know, Venezuela's. Um, but yeah, this idea that it can't happen here is really, I think, the crux of everything. And it's it's why your story and the stories of everybody else at the office and, and anyone else who's ever fled communism um, or fled any type of tyranny, these are the important stories. Um, there's, uh, there's this woman, Lily for Liberty, that I follow online, and she fled communist China. Um, her parents were killed during the color revolution. And she says, you know, so sort of all the same things that yeah. you say. It's and a, it's a recipe. It's a cookbook. Yeah. And, and they're following and that, that it. was taught by the Cubans. The Cubans have so much influence in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. That they gave them all the recipes how to oppress a right. people. And do you think... And, th- and they got it from the Soviets. So it, it's just crazy. It's interesting. You really and can it's been, trace uh, it. What seventy years in Cuba now? Right. So to the people who are here in the U.S. and are you know kind of exhausted with politics and they roll their eyes and they say like it's not going to happen here. What do you say to them? It has the possibility of happening. Um, yeah. And I don't know these elites that right. are up there in power doing their schemes and 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 it happens little by little you you boil the frog little by little yeah but you have to those little things you have to stop them too right well we can and your representatives and your senators should be the ones representing you right not themselves the president this president it's um what you call it current a puppet yeah, the yeah current biden one. he's a puppet because right. and he just dropped out of the race and nobody knows what he's doing right and kamala's probably gonna do the same um, you think she's gonna drop out sh- no the the she's, so she's gonna gonna, be a puppet. she's a puppet yeah. right yeah because well, she has no nobody's ever even voted for her yeah, she has no policy she has no right she'll do nothing while, no accomplishments uh, while biden was in power yeah well, well, right now she's doing nothing. Right. And if she wanted to do anything that she says she's going to do, she could have done it already. Yeah. So. That's right. She could free her ass today. Yes. Um, do you know that Kamala's father was a teacher that taught Marxism? Wow. Yeah. It's really alarming. Um, her father so was a. The research and, uh, and then you find this Marxist. Yeah. Roots everywhere. I read something recently. Um, it was it was an interesting analysis that sort of walked through the idea that Americans basically believed that they had defeated communism, and so we were kind of like going around saying it could never happen here. Like we've already won. We've defeated. You know. Um, defeated. We defeated communism. We took down the. The Berlin Wall, you know, these things. And so there there came this period of time where we weren't, like, on the lookout. And I think it's an interesting, an interesting concept to, like, look at and and see what happened. Like, it happens in the school system, too. Oh, yeah. It's like they, uh, they teach them. They, it's, a, it's a generational thing mm-hmm. where whatever is taught in the schools, they should just stick to the teaching the what people need to you know they're gonna need to every day uh, on their like, everyday lives but not indoctrinate them exactly to the, for exactly. the state yeah which it happens it happened in venezuela mm-hmm. to um 
when I was there, um, they um, they they implemented uh, pre-military uh, instruction. Okay, what was that? So everybody had to march and and learn uh, military tactics or whatever okay. from high school. Okay, that wasn't never there. That okay. was only on the military schools. Yeah, but now every single school. Right. Uh, had that pre-military school class. And it came from, like, it came from above, obviously, like, no. perhaps from the Department of Education. Mm, yes. <laughs> and, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? The um, pre-military school? Yeah. So they're and then implementing... And the, the National Police, that was the other thing that... What did the National that Police... That implemented. That, the, before, it was just, um, like, each city or whatever, they had their police. Their own. Their own police. Okay. Um, stations and yeah they created this national police in the in national police academies okay and they recruited every single kid out yeah. there to do their bidding so more centralization which so gives they can more control and they were i mean you're hi you're you're they were hiring the kids out of 18 years old and giving them a gun and here yeah. go protect the people but right they were just bribing people like not bribing like taking bribes from people for because they oh we're in the police now and yeah and they were like they will stop you for whatever and let's see what you got there and it's so not really like actually looking for the good of the people they're more just like they become puppets because they of the were state. all because they were puppets of the state yeah. and because they're all kids we know right. they weren't adults you can't yeah. give all these 18 year old kids guns and then go protect the people right like we have enough problems with corrupt police yeah. Now and there's like there's old people and whatever. In Venezuela. No, like in Here. the US. Okay. Yeah. So now imagine giving a bunch of kids. Right. <coughs> Eighteen year olds. Uh, letting them take over. And then take over. It's kind of like what happened. They, in the they're summer. gonna do the government's bidding. That's what's gonna happen. Right. Yeah, because they don't know any better. They've been largely propagandized by government-run schools. You know, people don't like to think of public school as a government-run school, but that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yep. And we have seen, as you mentioned, generation after generation, where like the core learning, your math, your sciences, like the hard, hard sciences have completely deteriorated. Yeah. You know, they've lowered the standards. Um, they've really just watered it all down. So you have like idiots now, idiots that can't read, they can't write, they don't teach um, script, you know, script, like cursive. Yeah. Can you write in cursive? I can write. I, I use, not in English, <laughs> maybe not in English. Okay, but in but as a Spanish. In Spanish, I was taught in cursive. But in English, I don't know, I think it's kind of hard to put the word together. In That's English. all right. We'll give you a pass. If you can write cursive in any language, I think it's good for the brain. But mm -hmm. they don't teach it anymore. No. Um, they don't teach cursive. And there's a lot of things they don't teach. Some oh, places. they use full puppets for the state. Yeah. That's what they're teaching, yeah. Yeah. So there's just all of these structures in place and they kind of like all come together. And if we don't help dismantle them, they're going to be in place. We're going to have communism. Yes, we're going to end up with communism. Yeah. And we'll see where we're going to have to flee to or not. So go vote. What else? Go vote. What else can you do besides voting? <sighs> Is there anything else? So we're going to do this again, right? I want to have like a panel. Uh, we're going to take all the people from Bite Federal that have fled communism and we're going to do like a whole panel. Uh, but this was a great like intro conversation. Hopefully you guys find it interesting. I yeah. find it fascinating. Um, Is there anything else before we wrap that you want to say to people, you know, coming into, so it's the end of September. We're sitting here. Uh, we have October. Who knows what kind of nonsense is going to happen. Hmm. And we have the election in November. And, yeah. Is there anything you want to say to people? You have to sit down and, and read the policies that this new, these two um, candidates are going to put. And don't vote because, oh, I hate this guy. Yeah. Or I hate this girl. Or she's a woman, she's so I'm going to vote be, for her. She's going to be or he's going to be the one that's going to be dictating policies for the next four years. So 
do your research vote with the heart don't vote because some media told you because this guy said something or he or she said something so turn your tvs off so, because the guy that's currently in power was supposed to run for another four years so imagine that just a continuation of the the past four years and probably an escalation and i say probably but really it's it's factual in that the few policy points Kamala has put out are escalations of current, you know, bad trends economically, um, constitutionally. She's talked about price controls. She's talked about she confiscating nuts. guns. She's really, really... She can't do... She's crazy. Um, price control. Like, everybody... Oh, wait, wait. You mean it can't done. happen here? I'm saying that she can't do it because I'm saying because what is she nuts? Like she can, she needs to do a research and, and and see what price control does, and it has done it every time price control gets put into place everywhere. But I think she really believes in it. I mean, her father was a Marxist teacher. She's got her comrade. Uh, it's what's like his name? We're he, all telling you what what's gonna happen with price control, right? And she's still gonna do it. She's gonna do it because she's a puppet. She's been, you know, she's being, I think, largely dictated to. But also, you know, it's interesting because I think Biden, Biden spent his whole life in politics, and he was super corrupt. We see all these things coming about out about like the Biden family making money and taking bribes and stuff like that, but. You shouldn't, I think, be, you shouldn't be in the politics for that, that long. No, no, that's... It's way uh, too long. No, there absolutely need to be limits on all of these things. But I think in some, like, in some sense, Biden was still an American. He was corrupt as fuck, and he was like... He didn't care about people, and, and there's a lot to be said there. But my fear with Kamala is that she was raised by communists, hmm. and she... You might have like a good faith debate with people about like, do price controls work? And obviously we know that they don't, but I think the scariest thing is that she believes that they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun Yeah. if they implement something like that. I mean, she may not implement them abroad like maybe like what what can, what price control can she do that kills the whole capitalist system too it does because I mean you it's you 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 as a company me as a burger place or whatever i go and sell this burger for this price now mm -hmm. you're gonna dictate how much you're gonna have to i'm gonna have to sell it for yeah diminishing my profits and I cannot adjust while while in the back you are printing a shitload of money, mm -hmm. devaluing the currency and the patties that I have to buy yeah. to make this burger are getting pricier and pricier while you still don't adjust the price of the burger that I'm still selling or that I have been selling price fix for the past a year. Yeah. And it's been a whole year of inflation and on the new patties that I have to buy to make this burger now are more expensive than the burger itself that I have to sell. So that's why it collapsed over there. You know, it's interesting because let's be, okay, so she doesn't actually have to implement price controls, right? Because what you're describing, they actually, I mean, people can say like, oh, she would never do that. And maybe she won't, although we're sort of like joking on ourselves, right? We've been saying like, oh, don't say it could never happen here. But even if it doesn't go that far. Even if they don't label it price controls, they're still really implementing policies that are like same, same. Like we deal with so much regulation mm. that like are price controls even necessary, right? So we're looking at like no longer operating in certain states because of the regulatory controls that are newly put in place. We can't make money. It's, it's exactly like yeah. as you're describing the burger, I'm thinking about uh, one state in particular where the regulations and the limits have been like put into place that we mathematically can't make money. Yeah, and and the less regulations, the the cheaper stuff should be. 
because right. now there's more freedom there's more free markets yeah the more you regulate stuff uh now somebody's gonna have to eat into your profits somehow right. because re of regulation yeah um i don't know what she will regulate though um well we don't even they need regulate it in venezuela they regulated yeah. food and it wasn't like every item like, it was a shitload of items but food and medicine and gas was always regulated and that's like just a couple fixed. things. I mean, they're important things, but it's just rent, a couple of things. Rent control. Rent control. Say, rent control yeah. for... Those were all the things that they started to price control. Rent control. Um, what else can you regulate? It's important, I think, for people to remember, like... Just because they don't call it price control. Like, I can hear the people online on Twitter saying, like, oh, she would never do that. Oh, look, she didn't implement price controls. But, like, if they implement so much regu uh, regulation that it has the same effect, it's like you don't even have to label it. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, so there's this gray area where people want to, like, ignore they don't want to they don't want to care they don't want to have to i'm just saying ultimately like you have to think critically about the policies you know you're saying like look at the actual policy and you have to do it objectively just because it doesn't have like a big rubber stamp on it that says corruption or price control doesn't mean it's not going to ha ultimately have the same effect yeah. you know the bottom line is that there's one side that believes in heavy regulation and control and the other side that wants to get rid of a lot of regulation and allow for free markets they just messed around with um um the realtors here the, down there oh like the whole the in u.s, US? Yeah. oh yeah they changed the, what the was percentage that? of the buy or mm -hmm. something like that um i don't know that it, i don't know if it's a good thing or details. not details there were a lot of i think it was on the the commissions on yeah the buying uh, they got rid of it and then it goes into the other one right and that's the other thing. The, when there's regulations in place, mm -hmm. um, people find a way to circumvent them. Yeah. And they, sometimes it ends up being worse. Right. Uh, because of that. It's like the black market. People are always going to find a way yeah. to circumvent that. And yeah. Controls don't work. Controls don't work, no. It's like saying, oh, we're going to put gun control in place and you'll all be safe. Well? Mm, yeah, it's going to be the opposite. Yeah, only the places... Only the bad guys are going to... The ones that are going to have guns. Yeah, the places with the most gun laws end up having the most oh. gun crime. Yep. So, all right. Don't give up your guns. Don't vote for regulation. Go vote. Vote no, for something. Vote. Hopefully you're voting for yeah, the free vote market. For something. Yeah. Vote the day... On the day. On the day. Don't yeah. vote by mail. Don't be lazy. Yeah. And uh, hopefully they ask for your ID when you go to vote. <laughs> well, there's the SAVE Act. We didn't talk about this. Are you familiar? SAFE Act. SAVE. Is it SAFE, safe. or SAVE? I'm not, I'm not sure. There's, there's a bill right now um, that was put forward. It passed in the House. It stalled in the Senate. They refused to pass it. So they attached it to the spending, the current spending bill. And they're trying to say, like, if we don't yeah, and then Kamala, pass the government. Kamala cries that uh, Trump, Trump, did Trump it, stopped it. That, that Trump stopped the bill mm -hmm. for border because this or that, while there were a lot of shit in the bill that didn't have to be in there. Right, right. Yeah, this is such nonsensory. Like, they really should be voting on single issues. But, of course, exactly. they don't want to do that because it would be too transparent and it would yeah, be immigration too Immigration bill that sends a shitload of money to Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then the, um, what was it, the infrastructure bill. I think Biden recently oh, so. said, you know, we shouldn't have even labeled it that. Uh, no, it was um, inflation. The Inflation Reduction inflation Act reduction, yeah. had nothing to do with inflation yeah. or reducing. Maybe one thing. <laughs> Yeah. Out of the 100 items. Yeah, so they have these crazy omnibus bills. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's hard not to be black-pilled. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, but we have to save the United States of America because if we don't, we're going to be living in Venezuela. Yes. The new Venezuela. We're going to go back to new Venezuela. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. And, you know, thanks, you guys, uh, for joining us. And I, I always, I'm bad at this part. Follow us, uh, like our channel, follow us for all of your um, anti-communist content. We're going to do more of this. And if you have questions, uh, message us. You know, you can yeah. hit us up. And I love being able to go into the office and be like, you guys, what happened uh, in Venezuela when this or when that or whatever and it's just it's fascinating to me and I think it's it's a really valuable resource especially as we're like fighting these battles here in the United States so I'm really like happy to be able to have these conversations um, and yeah hopefully stop it from happening here thanks for so, the invite yeah and we didn't even talk about Bitcoin at all so we're gonna come back next time and we're gonna actually talk about Bitcoin Bitcoin and communism but yeah, well, they're really related, you know, because if you don't have free markets, yeah. in one way, you're going to end up with this black market for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and this is really, I mean, we, we should have this conversation. It's a, whole, it's a whole thing, and I think it really relates. It ties in in many ways. Um, when you have free markets, you can have the best currencies rise, which Bitcoin being one of them. Um, and if you have lots of regulation, you have price controls and regulation and restriction, then you ultimately end up kind of with a black market. So that's its own conversation. We'll come back yep. and talk about that. That's good. I know there, you have some thoughts on Bitcoin being, I have uh, lots of thoughts. <laughs> Bitcoin being, um, yeah, currency kidnapped. or a digital gold. Was it hijacked? hijacked. We've got some hot takes. Uh, yes. But we will come back. Join us again. We'll have that conversation. And um, yeah, so thank you again for joining us and Thanks. we'll see you again soon.